Hi everyone, welcome to the Divine Truth Experience channel and my name is Perry and I'm Courtney. Um, today we've invited Courtney uh, to come on as a special guest uh, to the YouTube channel and she wants to talk to you uh, about her experiences with God um, just as Nikki and I have experienced over the previous months and I'm really excited because I kind of know what she wants to talk about but not fully she's kept it a little bit locked up and um, so we, I, I'm, I'm interested as you are to see what she's going to share with you today and uh, I hope <laughs> I think I might learn a few few things myself so um, so yeah I'm just really excited about about creating this video and it's just really awesome that Courtney's come over from America, obviously we're in London, and she wants to kind of share her, her process through, through uh, following God's work. So what we're going to do is we're going to, Connor's going to introduce herself and you can learn a little bit about her and then after that we'll get into the material. So over to you Courtney. Okay. <laughs> so um, I'm Courtney and obviously I'm from America, not from here, um, but I'm visiting so I'm glad to be able to make a visit on the Divine Truth Experience channel. Um, so I've been following Divine Truth for about probably almost five years now. Um, and I came across it through Perry, actually. So Perry and I have known each other for uh, a long time. And you came across it first and then mm -hmm. sent me a video. Um, yeah, and it was pretty, pretty quick for me that I got really into it. Initially, there was some resistance based on some New Age beliefs I had, but that lasted for like half an hour, and then I just wanted to watch more videos, and then the rest was kind of history. Um, so, yeah. Cool. Um, so, what, Courtney, you want to talk about um, blocks to God. So, Courtney wants to chat about feelings, um, parental feelings, and how she used to not really include God in the whole picture of emotional processing and healing and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. I mean, by the way, like <laughs> okay. talk about how I'm still getting used to the process here. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah. So basically, for me, kind of the brief history is that um, when I was little, I went to church. I went to basically a Methodist church in um, upstate Vermont in the U.S. Um, and I had kind of a unique experience in that my religious um, my religious experience was not damaging so a lot of people have pretty damaging experiences with religion but for me um, it really wasn't that way um, I went to a church that really just emphasized God's love and being a good person and um, and when I was little I did feel like I had a I did have a relationship with God um, and I would talk to God and think about God and I felt that God was pretty great. <laughs> um, I felt that God was my friend and um, yeah, and it felt, I felt connected. I liked going to church um, and, and it wasn't just a church though. I mean, I would spend time with God. I didn't really know what I was doing, but I would kind of go out and play and just think about God. And um, so, so I did have that. Um, and basically what ended up happening for me is I, well, I didn't realize what was happening, but over the course of my childhood, I kind of lost a lot of that connection with God. Um, and what I've realized now was happening was that as traumatic events happened in my life, like a lot of us have, um, I didn't really know how to process that. I didn't know what to do with those emotions. And so um, I basically just started feeling like maybe God didn't actually care what was happening to me. Um, because at the time when I was little, I felt like maybe God would take me away, maybe God would change things, maybe God would stop the things from happening that were happening, and, um, and then that never happened. And so I kind of started having this feeling of like losing faith and kind of feeling like, wow, I, like I thought God was there and maybe God's not there actually. And, um, and so eventually I kind of pretty much lost the whole the entire connection completely. Probably, I'd say probably by the time I was 11 or 12, it was pretty much gone. Um, and then I didn't really engage with, with God or, or th I didn't really think about it either way. I wasn't like, I didn't go to atheism or anything like that. I just didn't think about it. Um, stopped going to church. My family actually stopped going to church. And then, um, 
when I was probably about 17 or 18, I kind of found myself starting to think about maybe you could say spirituality again. I started finding myself just like, I would just be like driving along the road or I'd be laying in bed at night and I'd start thinking to myself like, does God exist or doesn't God exist? And, you know, kind of like the bigger questions <laughs> in life, I guess. Um, so, so that's kind of where it started. And at the time I was not in a very happy place emotionally either. Um, I had depression and it was, it was a pretty dark period of my life. Um, and, you know, I, 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 even now I don't quite understand why I suddenly started having that feeling again, but I did start having that feeling again of like wanting to connect with something. Um, and so I started seeking, you know, kind of different types of spiritual paths. So um, I was kind of open to anything. I, I mean, I read... I read Christian books and I read books that were all about God and I also explored like new age spirituality and um, meditation and lots of things and um, kind of tried to get myself out of the dark place that I was in, I guess. Um, and then I ended up at a kind of a spiritual retreat center, which is where I met Perry. Um, and, and then, yeah, and then, um, so then the divine truth came along. Um, and like I said, I was pretty enamored with it pretty much right away. Um, and, but what ended up happening is like, I would, I'd watch all the seminars and I, I found all of it interesting and I, I liked watching the seminars about God, but sometimes when Jesus and Mary would talk about like the, the level of like love from God or, or love for God that they had or. The details of their connection with God, I would sort of feel like it didn't, I, like I could I feel have, I wasn't there. And have a passion. Yeah, I feel yeah. like I feel I wasn't where they were with it. Um, but I think, I think what I did is probably what a lot of people do, which is I wanted to think that I was a lot more open to God than I actually was. Um, and so it was probably about a year, almost a year ago, that I started kind of being a bit more honest with myself about the fact that I wasn't having the same feelings that they were describing in the videos and I, I didn't really pray. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't really want to, basically, and so I didn't. Um, and so, yeah, so it kind of started, I guess, with me kind of coming to terms with the fact that all this amazing knowledge that I, you know, learned from them and yet the most important part, I wasn't. I wasn't engaging. Um, yeah. I was choosing not to engage that, and so, um, so I kind of had to had a heart to heart with myself about <laughs> about that and the fact that that wasn't my main priority. It wasn't my main focus, and there were some resistances there. Yeah. So it wasn't a desire to want to know God specifically. Yeah. 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 And it wasn't that I like disagreed with what they said about God or that I, I avoided those seminars or I, you know, I, I didn't, cause I didn't, I didn't grow up really with religion or, or teachings where I, I, I don't have a feeling like God is wrathful and God's punishing and, you know, some of those religious feelings that people have, but there was still something going on that was causing me like not, you know, to feel kind of like mm -hmm. apathetic about it and not have this like deep desire for it. So, um, so what was it that changed, like, can maybe like help people? So they were like, not loving God at all. And then, well, having a sense of like, you didn't really mind including God or not. Yeah. And you go on this journey on your own. Was there like a turning point where all of a sudden, like God felt important to you? Like, was there a yeah. moment or, a, yeah. Yeah, well, I think, I think I started having this realization that I was probably limiting my happiness a lot, and I, and I was probably a curiosity too. It was kind of like, like I once I was honest with myself about the fact that that wasn't a priority, then I was like, well, why? <laughs> like, why would that not be a priority? That's weird. yeah. It's like Jesus and Mary constantly saying, "Put God first. Put God first. Yeah. And then obviously, if you're not putting God first, yeah. So I started yeah. feeling like, what's the difference between how they're feeling and how I'm feeling? Like, why? Yeah. Um, and so I basically started praying, ironically, <laughs> kind of praying about that. <laughs> I was like, okay, God, you know, why don't, why don't I want you? Why don't I 
yeah. then. Um, and pretty pretty much right away, I could feel that basically what it was is that I had a lot of feelings of anger and abandonment about God. Um, and so because of that, like basically the feelings that I realized, you know, I started doing a lot of journaling, like reflection and prayer and um, it was prayer. That's a weird thing. So I was praying about my resistance to prayer, <laughs> but it, it is what I was doing. Um, and I started feeling like, you know, I had these feelings like God had abandoned me. Um, when I needed God when I was little, God just didn't show up. And I, I felt like I had trusted God and God had broken that trust. And I felt like, um, I felt like I had interpreted what Jesus and Mary had said about prayer to mean that I need to prove myself to God. I felt like here's all this criteria that God has before I can receive God's love and I've got to do all this stuff. And that's, that felt like evidence to me that God's love was conditional and I felt like, you know, from an angry place, I felt like I want, I want God to prove to me that, you know, God can love me. <laughs> I don't want to prove to God that I'm, or I saw it as proving to God that I was lovable or that I deserved love. Um, and I had a lot of anger about um, feeling like I had to earn love in my life. And so I felt completely resistant to anything that felt like it was anything along those lines of having to prove it to God, basically. Um, so, yeah, I just started feeling through some of that pain, I guess. And, and what was interesting is before... Like before, when I was kind of becoming aware of some of those things, those feelings that I had, I, um, I, I really thought they were about God. Like I really thought those feelings were feelings that I had between me and God about God. And what I found was like when I would go into that emotion that I thought was about God, eventually I'd end up feeling like, oh, this is actually about something that happened in my childhood, or this is actually about how I feel about my mom and my dad, or treatment that I received from them. And, um, and I did um, go through a lot of that rage and a lot of feelings of abandonment and a lot of pain. I cried a lot. And um, probably, probably one of the most special things for me was like having that feeling of because I was so, like I, like I said before, I didn't, I didn't have a belief that God is wrathful and punishing and kind of like those religious beliefs that people have. What I felt was like, God's just has better things to do and doesn't really care what happens to me and kind of like can't be bothered and I'm sort of not important. And um, so what was really special for me was when I started to feel through a lot of that feeling and then I started to feel the truth that God had actually been like right there with me the whole time, just like waiting for any entry point, any, like whenever it could happen. And that was, um, yeah, that was, that was special for me because it was completely the opposite of the feeling that I actually had about God. Was that like the turning point? It was you? one of them. Yeah. Yeah. It was one of the turning points was like, and I had that a cut with a couple of different emotions where like I would be feeling an emotion that I thought was about God and it was actually about my parents, but, and then I feel the opposite feeling coming in. So I'd be feeling like God doesn't care about me. And then I'd feel like realize, oh, it's actually, I felt like my parents didn't care about me. And then I'd start to feel like God cared about me. <laughs> I'd actually feel yeah. that feeling or I'd feel that God loved me and I'd feel that God never left. And basically just the opposite stuff, <laughs> like the exact opposite stuff. And it felt like, um, it felt like God just couldn't wait to mm -hmm. prove me wrong. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, I had that feeling as well. They were the major, I mean, Nick and I, if you've watched the videos, we've talked about that a lot of when, you know, we felt God's love for the first time and just how that changes your whole feeling about the divine love path and, and kind of like what you make a priority in your life. Um, so I think it's just really great how you meet someone else who's gone through the same experience. Yeah. Um, Nick and I did a talk the other night and one of the questions that the, someone in the audience asked us was about, 
kind of like morals and ethics and stuff like that. And it was kind of just like a, a lot of the world that I feel don't really have this sole perception of what's going on and with God. So she kind of like challenged the idea of like, like God really existing and you can just improve yourself on your own just through morals and ethics. Um, and what I've come to kind of come to learn is that you're, when you start to feel your soul, when you have an experience like what Courtney had and what myself had, Nikki and everyone else was received God's love is, you can start to, you can just sense of how important God can, like God's love can change your own soul and that like you can grow. And then from having that experience, like your desire grows for God. I don't know if you had that same experience. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, because it's like when I started to feel the truth about God and I started to feel that God loved me and God cared about me and God hadn't left and God never abandoned me and didn't endorse what happened to me. Um, what in, what started to happen is I felt like now I want to pray because before it always felt like, oh, I'm supposed to pray. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Jesus and Mary say I'm supposed to pray. Uh, you know, and then it was like, oh, like I want to, like, like, uh, it was like I'd made this discovery, like, wait, I can, like, I can pray? Like, it's that simple? I can just, like, I can pray and I can, like, exert that desire and then I can get stuff back? Like, yeah. And then you change and you're like, wow, I can change. Yeah. <laughs> what else can I change? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah. And, and I think that one of the big realizations for me in that whole experience was how, um, how I just wanted to put all those feelings on God rather than my parents. I mean, it wasn't completely like that because I felt like I had come to terms with a lot of the stuff about my childhood and about my parents, but there was still a certain level of like having put that on God, basically. And I think it feels to me like that can happen, you know, like when you're young, when you're little and you don't you don't have any way to make sense of trauma, and you don't have any way to understand, and you don't, you don't have framework to understand that that your parents are pro probably wrong, even though they're saying they're right, and you don't have framework to understand that God can't intervene, and like you just don't understand all these things. It's like because when some of that stuff started happening, I started losing that connection. I probably was as young as you know six or seven or eight, and you know, so I certainly wasn't trying to put it on God, but it was just. It was like what, what, what I had to do to kind of emotionally survive in some ways. It's like the feelings had to go somewhere. I had to attribute it to somebody, <laughs> and so I started to just feel like, you know, God doesn't really care. One of the questions I wanted to ask you was um, the feeling that you had about God when you was a child, in its pure sense, and then if that feeling went away, and then now you're feeling God again. Is that the same feeling as what you had when you were a child? Is that the same? Yeah. You know, the same texture to it? And yeah. yeah. Yeah, it does. I mean, I obviously I'd like to develop it a lot further than what I had as a kid, but yeah, it does feel like that because what it feels like, because um, what it, because I wasn't, it wasn't like I questioned the fact that I felt like God cared about me as a, when I was little. It's just that I had this association with like, like I thought you cared about me and then you just left yeah. basically as well as I never had a feeling that God was with me until I was in my 30s so that's why I was yeah. like as even as a kid I didn't have that feeling oh there's a God there's something bigger than me I just felt like lost and abandoned all the time so it wasn't like something was taken away yeah it was only when I hit 30 and I had my first feeling of God I was like first feeling of love from God in my 30s I was like oh my God this is true and then I had this bunch of grief about I've had 30 years of not knowing that God was there. Yeah. And then that for me was like a major yeah. turning point. Yeah. 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 And I could see, you know, cause I've shared a little bit about that part of my story about, about having had a connection with God when I was little. And I kind of get the feeling sometimes like people think that makes it, or that's made it easier for me to connect with God. And, and maybe it has, but but it's still like reconnecting with God is still come down to the same principles that like we all have to engage in the sense that like, like nothing was going to change if I didn't change it really, mm -hmm. you know, it wasn't like God was going to come <coughs> along and like force my will or try to convince me that God was different when I was really like 
pretty set in how I thought that God was. And so, you know, even though I had that connection with God when I was little, like if I hadn't really made the choice to, to be honest about the fact that I didn't want God and then to start working through some of those emotions, like could have easily been mm -hmm. another 10, 20, like I don't even know. So it didn't, I, you know, it, it still, still was like the same, same principles of unblocking, I guess is what I mean. Yeah. And I guess now as an adult, you're conscious of God in a way where you can like want to desire God more. And maybe as a child that yeah. you know, wasn't there as much. Yeah. It was just a feeling. Yeah. Yeah. It was a feeling. Um, yeah. And I think, uh, I think what probably what's common for a lot of people on the divine love path that I sort of mentioned earlier is I think people have sometimes a hard time admitting that. Like I think there's, there can be a lot of like self judgment that can happen too, where people feel like, but for me, I probably, I've been on the divine love path for saying that I was on it <laughs> for like four years, probably before I really started going through this process, you know? And I, so, so it's like, you just, I think you just have to, be really honest about where you're at with God, no matter how long it's been yeah. and how. Yeah, what I've noticed what you is you think it means about you if you don't. And yeah, it's like the judgments towards yourself. Yeah, because like you've got the label. Even sometimes now when I'm doing like the videos or blogs and stuff, you know, because you know I'm out there now in the world saying stuff, it does get the thought of kind of just like, oh, what will people think of me if I if I admit one day I don't believe in God or. <laughs> Yesterday, I didn't feel God's love. It's just like, kind of, now what does that mean? Yeah. And it's that judgment, isn't it? Of like, what will people think of me? Yeah. Or what if I'm chatting with someone else on the divine love path and I admit I don't believe in God? Da, 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 like, <laughs> you know, it's like all those like silly judgments, really. Yeah. When it's kind of like, the truth is what God really wants from us. Yeah. And that's yeah. kind of like what the turning point was for you, wasn't it? Yeah. As soon as you admitted and was truthful to yourself, how you were feeling, yeah. bam, God yeah. came in. Because before, I think I did like to tell myself, like, yeah, God's great. <laughs> I like God. Yeah. Um, and then what I realized was that really the truth is, you know, I, I, don't, I don't really want to do this. Like, I don't really want to connect with you. I don't really, um, you know, so, yeah. Yeah, and it's a, it's a good lesson probably along the way too, right? Because even after... Like you've received some God's love or you, you feel some connection to God. It still goes through phases. Yeah. You know, there's still periods where it's like, oh, I don't want God's love right now. Or I don't want to connect with God on that topic or on yeah. that day or whatever. And so, yeah. Yeah, I think that's important to mention. Like for anyone who is maybe absolutely new to this, like from our experience, like with experience, like ebbs and flows of progression and then some stagnation. And then as you kind of work through some emotion, like some more growth, um, I used to beat myself up so much because I just wanted to be perfect straight away. I wasn't really prepared or have the patience to want to like, go the, like a distance amount of time. And so I, I don't beat myself up as much mm. that the process might take long. I've just kind of like, <laughs> you know, um, become comfortable with that. Yeah. And just like realize the amount of damage that's been done in your childhood is just going to take time. And just to like be cool with that. Uh, not to get too cool where you get super chill and don't do anything about it, which <laughs> has happened as well actually. Um, but you'll soon you'll soon know when that happens because you get a little uh, gentle kick up the bum, and um, <laughs> in the sense of that your life starts to become painful, and then you go, oh yeah, I know why. It's because I'm not doing this and I'm not doing that. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think it's really important to kind of like remember that progression and patience and like loving to yourself and having kindness. And I think, like you say, like admitting to yourself that maybe you don't want God might be where you're at. And that could be the next, just one small emotion yeah. blocks you from a whole host of yeah. progression. Yeah, Yeah. well, and it, one thing that stuck with me is when, you know, Jesus and Mary say things like, just be real with God. Like God just wants you to be real about where you're at, you know, and that's helped me a lot. Um, and I think... You know, the other thing that uh, maybe I'd like to share about or talk about, too, is, like, one thing I've really realized is is that you, it seems like it's kind of impossible to really connect with God if you're not willing to deal with this tough stuff about parents, you know? Like, because the, 
the damage did come from our families, or not just our parents, depending on your caretakers mm -hmm. and who was around primarily as, as when you were a kid, but like that's where the damage came from. And you know, I just realized that to unblock yourself from God, like you have to deal <laughs> with the parental stuff, you know, and so you kind of have to get over the whole like wanting to see your child lived as better than it was, or wanting to mm -hmm. kind of like not see how you were treated for what it was. Um, because you have to make that shift of, okay, I'm putting all of this on God. I'm saying God did this to me, did that to me, made me feel this way, made me feel that way. And then there has to be a shift at some point where you realize God didn't do any of that <laughs> at all. <laughs> and it was other people, 100% other people. That's a pretty big emotional experience, isn't it? Yeah. When you real, when you when you admit and come to that realization in your soul that it wasn't God. In fact, God was the opposite. Yeah. And then realizing that God was the opposite, and you can then feel God's love is just. Yeah. Stuff starts to become more real. Like if people are like on the fence, like does God exist? Does not? Does not God exist? When you start getting really honest, that's when you hopefully start to feel some. Some changes yeah. yeah yeah well because also like what I've experienced is when I feel some of God's love then it highlights even more how what I experienced in my childhood was not love mm -hmm. you know and what happens is a child was so off from love and so it's like you know if you hadn't if you hadn't admitted what really happened in your childhood before then and like it's gonna if you receive God's love, it's it's just going to highlight the contrast with that. And then if you don't want to deal with your parents' stuff, it could be easy to just shut off the whole process with God because it just, like by nature of it, it just exposes the truth about the lack of love because now you're feeling actual real love. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah, like feeling love. It, it, it's, it's, it's really interesting, isn't it, when you feel the quality of God's love versus the love that you felt. I remember, I remember the first time that I felt it, I realized that felt like I just never felt love ever in my whole life. Yeah. Um, and, then, and then receiving that feeling, you kind of like set the bar of like, okay, now I know what love is. So everything else in my life that I've been doing is not loving. Mm. And if I want to love like God does, then everything has to change in my life. Yeah. Basically. And yeah. then so this brings kind of like the topic to like, are you willing to change? Like, do you want to change? Yeah. Like, do you want to put, like you said at the beginning, do you want to put God first or do you just want to... You know, try and do things on your own. Mm -hmm. And if what I've experienced, if you don't put God first and you don't feel God's love, you haven't got like a, a gauge on to know what's the most loving thing to do. Yeah. Because how would you know, like from God's point of view, you're just kind of doing, well, I think it's this. And sometimes it might be in harmony with love, but once you receive God's love, like you know that you know. Yeah. Which is really wicked because it would prevent so many mistakes happening in your life. Not that mistakes are always bad, but you know prevention of like uh, pain is mm -hmm. um, you know it's going to be more joyful yeah 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 yeah. Um, yeah so yeah and I think um, yeah well and like because like you said too it's it's not that God's love just exposes the truth about how your parents have been unloving it also exposes the truth about how we've been unloving <laughs> how I've been unloving <laughs> yeah you know um, so yeah it, it definitely connects with all of that yeah, it's like the whole design is just amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, well, and, you know, like, since going through a lot of that stuff with God and removing my my, my blocks to prayer and my blocks to wanting to connect with God, um, and then being able to involve God in working through some of the emotional injuries that I have, like, I can't even tell you, like, like the amount of stuff that I've been able to work through after that point involving God that like I just was not getting through like in my own self-reliance I was just trying to trying to do stuff in self-reliance or I was trying to you know realize what I needed to work on and like trying to do it all by myself I didn't realize that I was doing that I kind of thought that you know didn't, I probably wouldn't before that point I probably wouldn't have said oh I'm just in self-reliance but I was and so, you know, it's like, I can't, just can't tell you, like, it's so rewarding to, to work through blocks about God because, like, it really is like Jesus and Mary say, like, the progression is so much faster <laughs> yeah. with God. Like, it's not even, 
it's like not even on the same level. You can't you can't even compare it. It's like it's like a turtle making little progress versus like <laughs> it's just so much faster. Yeah, it just makes so much sense like to um, want to deal with all your like you know if you've come across all this material and you're like which which emotions should I deal with first? Should I deal with my yeah. my money issues, my sexual issues, this issue? Like I'd say, like deal with your god issue first, because yeah. then it just makes all the others a lot more easy. Yeah. Um, and and it will kind of put you like instead for everything else in your life. Yeah. I, I, I say it a million times, like in all the other videos, about putting God first, and um, as Courtney is saying. Yeah. And the more and more people that I speak to, so like Courtney, Pete, and Nikki. Like, you know, people like After Jesus and Mary have shared their experiences. Like, we're all coming to the same conclusion. So it's like, oh, you know, it's really interesting that so many people who are, you know, going through these processes are coming up with the same conclusions. And it's like you can feel in the heart that you know that they know and I know, you know, it's like that. They yeah. 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 And, and God's laws, like, we'll chat about God's laws and it's like, yeah, I, I can feel that you know that that's how the law works. And so when you get lots of people asking about, you know, does God exist and how is how was the universe created and all these things? And we'd hey Jesus in the past say, Well I asked God and God told me through my feelings and stuff and we're going, Now it's like, yeah, yeah, I know that <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get that. That's pretty efficient. <laughs> that's an efficient way to go about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like the most logical thing <laughs> ever. It's like so simple. You're like, Well, why would I want to go do it that hard way? And then you realise like self reliance yeah. it's so crazy. Like it's such a crazy thing to do. <laughs> Like, why? Why? It's so exhausting and it just doesn't really work that well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's kind of like bringing it all back to God again, isn't it? Yeah. Making God the priority, which I think to some people, like, initially feels a bit of a strange thing to do. Yeah. Um, but you can only get there, like you're saying, it's, like, it's, it's, it's through the prayer. And um, we've talked, Nikki and I have talked about that in the past, and we'll probably do more in the future about prayer. Because that's kind of where it starts, really. Yeah, I think. Yeah, and and that was kind of what I started to engage really for the first time on the Divine Love Path too was the experiment. Yeah. You know, it's like it was almost as if I thought that I could just be on a path without really doing the experiment before. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like I could just skip that part, and um, but you have to, like you, you know, you have to, and and that that part was you know a process for me because what it felt like, like I mentioned earlier, it felt like. Well, one of the big feelings I had was like, I already gave my heart to God. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do it again because I already what tried happened. it. I already yeah. tried it. Look what happened. And, you know, um, and I didn't, I felt like prayer was like putting myself out there again. It was like opening my heart and being like, I don't know what's going to happen. I might get hurt. This might, you know. Um, yeah. And so then it just, you know, had to be an experiment. And then you realize like, oh. I pray to God, I'm not going to get my heart broken. <laughs> well, at least not in that way. <laughs> yeah. 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 So that built, you know, built a lot of faith too. And that's where you say the faith builds. Yeah. 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 Well, because it's it, another thing that stands out to me is, you know, Jesus and Mary will say like, it makes, like it makes you, you just have to turn to God because God can love better than anybody else can. Like people's love is so changeable and like, not reliable based on injuries and stuff, but like God is like the one person probably at this point that you can, you know, completely rely on mm -hmm. and completely open up to. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's it's special for me. It feels it kind of feels like um, everything that I always wanted to be true about God, and I like given up on being true. Mm -hmm. Turns out it is actually true. <laughs> yeah, and that thing you were saying before, like you can rely on God. It feels like. It's like there's a sense of like there's a rock in your life that you yeah. can go to. Yeah. Like even when your life's crazy and you know feels like it's a mess, there's like a little seed in there which I believe will grow over time into a big seed where you can just you know you know God's there. Like I don't feel that all the time. I'm gonna admit that like I'm not constantly like feeling God's in my life. My life's sorted. I'm just gonna pray and life's gonna be all right. Like that's not <laughs> that's not how it is in reality. But in some of my the issues that I've gone through. Like I do, there's a seed there now that wasn't there before, which was like, yeah, my life feels a bit strange and a bit of a mess, but I've gone through a process before where I prayed and things came out well. So if I do that again, then maybe the same thing will happen. And what I'm experiencing is like, 
bigger things are coming up in my life where I'm going like, oh, right, I've got to apply the same process, but the same feelings are coming up. It's just like, maybe it won't work. Maybe this is going to happen. Maybe God's not there this time. Um, but, so I've got to go through it again and again and again. And I'm sure the more I go through it, the big stuff in the future will just look like small stuff again. And then I'll look back and I'll go, wow, I can't believe I was sweating over that. Yeah. That's no problem. Like, and so, you know, I think it's just like, just, <laughs> it's just ongoing. Yeah. 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 It's definitely a process of building faith, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So is there anything else you want to talk about? Uh, talk in, in regarding um, <laughs> like the parent stuff or mm. like desire? Yeah. Um, is there anything like in the subject that you wanted to kind of share? Um, I feel pretty complete for now. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, I, feel, I mean, I was excited just to see what Courtney wanted to share about. I didn't really know what I was yeah. going to share. <laughs> yeah, it was a bit kind of off the cuff with a bit of structure around it. Um, but I feel like we've got the main point, which is the putting your projections from onto God over your parents. Yeah. Um, Wanting to do that. Basically, yeah. it's something we do because we want to. And we want to maintain that. You know, because it can shift any time. We just have to want to do it. Um, and and then you know there's probably a whole discussion we can have on like why do we want to do that and you know why why do we not want to put why do we not want to attribute things to our parents yeah. instead of God why would we rather put them on God and stay in that place yeah that could yeah. open up that could be a whole other thing a good few hours the point of... is there are reasons why <laughs> yeah that we do that yeah. yeah and so now in your life like going from like having God in your life to not having God in your life. Other way around. And then now... Oh, yeah. Not having and God. now that you felt God's love and then you're back. Like, yeah. how has your life changed? Like, now... I mean... Like, moving forward, like, does it, do you feel, like, much more um, assured about life in general and, like, your own... Yeah. Well, it's like, like you said about the, the seed or, like, the rock. I mean, it's, like, not having that, it's just... Yeah, it just, well, it's just not having the faith and not having God in your life. It makes everything feel so much more insurmountable. And, you know, so one of the things that has, like, added so much for me is that realizing that God always wants the best for me. Mm -hmm. Always. And, 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 ugh, I don't know, I could just go, you know, ugh, like, I... Can't even talk about it. I don't know. <laughs> I get Sometimes it. it's yeah. so hard to explain. It is hard to explain because a lot of this stuff is so emotional based, and often it's quite hard to say the words of how it is you're feeling. So, yeah. like we, I've seen Jesus do it before, present a seminar, and he just knows no one's getting it what he's saying, and he said it like a hundred times, and they're still not getting it. And as Nikki and I are presenting more and more stuff or chatting to people. You're talking to them, they're going, yeah, 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 yeah. And you're going, I can feel you. No, you, you absolutely don't get what I'm saying. And so, unfortunately, it's like one of those things that you you have to go through yourself. I say unfortunately, it's actually fortunate yeah. that you would want to experience yeah. those things. So. No, I would say that my life has probably changed in most most ways since involving God in my life. Which sounds like a big thing to say, but it's kind of true. Like, lots of things have changed in my life, I've worked through a lot of pretty big emotional injuries because I've got God's help. It's just, yeah, it's hard to even compare it because it's changed everything really. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I'm just was so chuffed to uh, present this video with Courtney today and it's been a new experience for myself as well. And so I hope you guys have been enjoyed watching and listening and, and learning some things. I've definitely learned some things. And yeah, we look forward to presenting more videos in the future. If you do want to look at the past videos, you can go onto the Divine Truth Hub uh, website or there is the Divine Truth Experience uh, YouTube channel and it's got all the, uh, the previous videos that we've done. And uh, yeah, you can also subscribe there and that will just um, alert you when we've got new videos coming up. So thanks for watching, thanks for Courtney and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. Boom! <laughs> that was wicked. Was it good? <laughs>
Good, yeah.